my name is Dora, and I am the Education Manager for Reef. We are based out of Key West, Florida, and we are just doing our part in providing free education to you guys. What we are going to be doing is we are going to be offering these lessons. Each um, day we'll have a different topic. So on Monday, today, we're doing ecosystems and food chains. On Wednesday, at the same time, we will be talking about coral reefs. And on Friday, we will be talking about mangrove ecosystems. And we will be doing this for the next few weeks as well. Again, on Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays, all will have different activities and different worksheets and follow-ups so that way you guys can retain this information. So let's first talk about biomes. So biome is a really strange word, um, but biome is honestly by definition just a large, naturally occurring community of flora and fauna, so plants and animals, occupying a major habitat. So oceans, the desert, the forest, or the Arctic tundra, those are biomes. So it's a very, very kind of umbrella term. But when we narrow down, when we talk about ecosystems, so ecosystem is a biological community of interacting organisms and their physical environment. So for the, in the example of the ocean biome, our main ecosystems here in the Florida Keys are coral reefs, seagrass beds, and mangroves. So our, those are our three main ecosystems. Um, obviously, it depends on where you are in the world. Um, a pond or a lake or a river is also an ecosystem. It's kind of a smaller category within that big, big umbrella term. So in an ecosystem, you have a few different factors. You, you have abi abiotic factors and biotic factors. But I will tell you that an abiotic factor is a non-living thing in an ecosystem. The sun would be an abiotic factor. It is not lived, so that is what we consider an abiotic factor. Other examples of abiotic factors in an ecosystem would be temperature, the pH, the salinity, so how salty the water is, any nutrients, pollution, rocks, sand, water, all those would be abiotic factors. Um, that brings me to this worksheet that we did make for you guys, especially for the younger ones. This is a good little practice. It's got the factors already on there, and they can just practice drawing it out, um, give them a little bit of something to do. So let's move on to biotic factors. A biotic factor is something that's living. So trees, flowers, fish, birds, bugs, reptiles, amphibians, mammals, so much more. A biotic factor is something that is living in that ecosystem. So together, those abiotic and biotic factors make up an entire ecosystem. So inside each of these ecosystems, we do have a food web, or the process of where energy is getting transferred to each other, who eats who, what eats what. So we're going to start at the very kind of beginning of the food chain, which is what we call a producer. So guys, a producer is something that creates the energy. So they're the beginning. And it asks, photosynthesis is the process of creating energy from what? So some of you have probably heard photosynthesis before. Some of you may have never heard of it. That's totally fine. So producers photosynthesize. Photosynthesis is creating energy from the sunlight. And that helps them create the energy that really jump starts the rest of the food chain. They are the foundation, and we also call them autotrophs, which means that they are self-feeding. So there's going to be your plants, so mangroves, seagrass, your pine trees, your seaweed, your phytoplankton, things that make energy from the sun and provide the beginning of that food chain. Now we'll move on to our consumers. Do consumers make their own food? Consumers do not want their own food. They do have to consume it. So think of it that way. Producers produce, consumers consume food. So guys, consumers are considered heterotrophs, meaning they receive their energy from other organisms. When we talk about consumers, we have several different levels of consumers. Uh, we have primary consumer, which is the first level consumer. We have the secondary consumer, which is obviously the secondary. And then you have the tertiary consumer, which is that third level. And we'll be practicing that with our food web worksheet towards the end of the class. Now let's start off with our herbivores. So our 
herbivores. What do you think that herbivores eat? I'll give you guys a few seconds to make your guess on that one. So herbivores eat plants. They don't eat meat. Um, they eat exclusively plants. Most herbivores have several stomach chambers and a longer digestive tract to help them consume all that plant matter. So think about herbivores that are in your ecosystem, in your backyard maybe. Now we're going to move on to omnivores. So guys, let me ask you this. What do you think an omnivore would eat? Right, guys good so omnivores eat both they eat both plants and meat technically humans are considered omnivores obviously some may have different dietary um, things they follow but omnivores eat both plants and meat and now finally we have carnivores so let's go what do we think carnivores eat All right, guys, good. So carnivores eat meat. That is absolutely correct. So think about your lions, your sharks. Your carnivores are going to be at the top of the food chain normally, and we'll get to that in Our last kind of role in an ecosystem in terms of what they consume are your decomposers. So your decomposers are the organisms that feed on the dead organic material kind of hanging out in the bottom, and they return the nutrients back to the soil, which helps the producers photosynthesize and create new energy. So it's like one big circle of energy flowing in each ecosystem. Now going back to our carnivores, our carnivores are your usually your apex predators. So let me ask you guys this, what do you think could be an apex predator? Sharks and lions are definitely going to be your apex predators in certain ecosystems. Um, especially in marine ecosystems, we usually have a shark at the top of that food chain there, the apex. Now, the apex predators are very, very important. Their job is to maintain populations. So, especially sharks, for example, their job is to eat the sick and wounded fish in that ecosystem. They prevent the spread of disease of other fish species, which could cause a complete collapse in that ecosystem. So, they have a very, very important job. If you remove any apex predator from that ecosystem, you could cause serious damage to that ecosystem as a whole. They're also called keystone species. And a keystone species, again, means that if you remove it, the entire ecosystem will most likely collapse. So you need them to have a healthy ecosystem. Guys, the energy in an ecosystem, and some of you may be familiar with the law of conservation of energy, it's that energy can neither be created nor destroyed. It can only be transferred or changed from one form to another. So that means that all the energy created in this ecosystem is getting transferred to some degree. It may get moved on to the next level or it may stay with that organism. So we already know that the energy does start from the sun and then that producer will photosynthesize. And then that energy gets consumed by your primary, secondary, tertiary consumers. But guys, only 10% of the, of the energy will actually move to each level. So only 10%, that's really not too much, it's actually a very small amount. That means that as you move up in each level, they're going to have to consume more and more, more. So again, guys, every time you have a something consuming something else, only 10% of that energy is actually going to get transferred. So let's move on to working on this. So if you guys have this out, um, go ahead and grab it and we'll start working on it a little bit. So what I did here is I chose to do a seagrass ecosystem. And with that, I decided that my producer was going to be shoal grass, which is a type of seagrass. So guys, again, if you're doing Say you're doing a forest ecosystem, you're not going to have a shark on here, okay? So let's make it a little realistic um, for those that are doing this worksheet with us. So my primary producer here, I have the shoal grass, which is a plant. It photosynthesizes, so it creates energy from the sun. 
Then I have my primary consumer. So my usually going to be an herbivore. So I put shrimp. That shrimp consumes the seagrass, and that's what makes it the primary consumer. Now again, guys, only 10% of the energy goes to each level. So every time you see these arrows, that means 10% energy. That's it. So not too much. All right, guys. So after we have the primary consumer, I chose my secondary consumer to be a snapper. So that snapper consumes a shrimp. It only gets 10% of the energy as well. So that is my omnivore. And then finally, I have my apex predator as a shark. So guys, a shark is my apex predator. It is the top of the food chain. And then down here, I have a hermit crab. So again, guys, this is just an example of a seagrass ecosystem. Again, seagrass right here, that is the plant in the seagrass ecosystem. We have a shrimp, a small, small animal that feeds on the seagrass. Up here, we have snapper, which is a type of fish, and that fish can be small or pretty big. They, uh, the smaller ones usually like to hang out in the seagrass. It's a nursery, but we'll be doing a session on seagrass, as I think, next week. And then that smaller fish will get consumed by a lemon shark. Lemon sharks definitely like to hang out in the seagrass beds. And then again, that little hermit crab on the bottom is your decomposer. So that hermit crab just kind of picks up and cleans up everything and all the scraps to make sure that the water doesn't get too dirty or too gross. So guys, that's my example of an ecosystem. And I encourage you guys to do your own um, based on wherever you, are, you live, whatever ecosystem is familiar to you. Maybe you have a forest in your backyard. Maybe you have a beach in your backyard. Something that you are familiar with that can be adapted. All right, guys. So that ends our lesson part of it. Now I do have an activity for those that find that looked at the uh, bioaccumulation activity right here.